the National Democratic Congress and the Electoral Commission of Ghana are at each other's throat again. This time, over the certified voters register, what really is the difficulty in getting the summaries of the register as has been demanded by the NDC? In fact, this was a matter that got the Electoral Commission and indeed the political party representatives having to spend the most part of last night. And you, you saw us break that news here on, on Ghana tonight from what we got from our colleague George Quening. That meeting was had to be dispersed as of 12 midnight, that's last night, almost midnight, because the Electoral Commission indicated that it is not obliged to present a summary of the voters register as was demanded by the NDC. They issued a statement earlier today after that uh, demand by the, the NDC yesterday. We're going to put portions of that statement on the screen right now just for the benefit of you are viewers and also ready to you on, on 3FM 92.7. Essentially, the Electoral Commission making the strong point that they are not legally obliged to give any summaries or they're summarized uh, that uh, voters register as was demanded by the NDC. Let's take a look at Jane Mensah last night addressing the press. To be able to do that. And so we are unable to provide it to you now as we speak. Per what we are doing now and our assessment is going to take anywhere between 45 minutes to an hour to finish that process. Then we can then start generating the statistics for you. As a commission, we will take our lead now, and it's up to you to keep it or retain it, but it is a certified true copy of the register. You cannot hold us to answer. We are not obliged to give you a summary. This has been the party since 1992, and it is out of, you know, the spirit of transparency and responsiveness, as I mentioned, that we are providing you some to you. So as we indicated, we will notify you tomorrow, and we will send the summaries, I believe, that by soft copy. Those who return their own, when you get the, the uh, summaries via WhatsApp or email, you can come and pick up your certificates. Well, that's Jen Mensah there, and earlier you heard the, the head of IT there also speaking about their inability to meet the demand of the NDC, and in fact, this was almost at midnight. Dr. Rashid Tanko Computer is the director of IT and elections for the NDC. I still have Dr. Jonas Aikwapon with me. Uh, Dr. Rashid Tanko, good evening. Thank you for joining us here on Ghana tonight. And now, according to the Electoral Commission chair, uh, there's no precedence to the demand that you're making that there should be a summary of the voters' register um, giving to the political parties. Is this consistent with precedence? Uh, Alfred, let me say good evening to your cherished viewers and you yourself. It's, Alfred, what they said is not true. In fact, they are economical with the truth. Why? Even the last, the last IPAC meeting we held, where they presented the revised provisional voter register to us, they, before they did that, they presented voter statistics and summary of the provisional register. And what he, Dr. Ofuri, did the presentation. He told us that at that time, the total registered voters, excuse me, the total registered voters at that time stood at 18,772,251. And when Feda Tunan gave us uh, the, the female voters in Ghana, male voters, uh, went further to give, to, 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 to give us uh, 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 fresh voters, as well as absentee mm. voters, transfer voters, proxy the, voters, the proxy special voters. voters. Yes, all we have all of that. Mm -hmm. Yes, you remember that one? Yes, that was that the provisional. That was summaries of the, of the register they gave us before the exhibition. Is that not true? Yes, that was a provisional. Now, for the provisional. that was a provisional. Now you are, you are now coming to give a, a certified register. And we have to ask for you to give it a summary this time around. Now, so let me can understand you, can this. You see that, can you see that something, something is amiss with their presentation? With, can't you see that? What, 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 and just for the benefit of our viewers and listeners, and Dr. Kapama, I'll bring you here at, at this point as we go on. Dr. Tanko, what's the, what's the importance of the summarized register? I mean... 
reason why well, the, they, demand, the demand you make is of critical consideration? Very, very important. You see, the register is a full body that contains polling stations, and they have five or six several lists that are listed into each of the polling stations. And so if you take a register and you want to tease out these figures, you will take a whole month. You will not be able to finish with it. And so those generating it, generating the data, as they are generating it from polling stations to constituents, they, they are taking out the figures to generate the summaries. So by the time they, finish and they finished compiling the register, they would have finished also compiling the summaries. It makes it easier to analyze the register. But when you just present a whole register on a, on a, on a drive, hard drive, and expect somebody to go and sit down, to now take polling station after register and list to get it. Then if the person want to, 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 to swindle you with data, he can get away with it before you realize the time is up. And these are the things they do. And I'm saying that this is not the first time. Look, we've been doing this since 1992. We have figures, data. Hey, look, if they, they don't have statistics, how come they are printing ballot papers? They generate the statistics from the register and give it to the polling editing printing houses for them to print the ballot papers. So this is not new. This when somebody sit down and tell you that we have never done this before, it is not true. I see. It is well, never she, true she, and she, can she, never she, be true. She was clear in, it's the, in the, what we, the video we just played that it's it's never happened. It's not been the case since 1992. So it's I'm not, not saying true, it. Alfred, it's the ECJ who is making that statement. Alfred, well, dismiss that. It's not true. I am saying that we've been in this business since 1992. We've done it severally. I see. Ah, what is voter code books? You may have been asking about, about it. This one, we don't even request it. They bring it. And the voter code books is what is known as the statistics. It gives you polling station registered, and then at the end of it, you, you see the total registered voter for each constituency. And at the end of all the constituencies put together, you, you see the total registered voters for the region. Well, uh, Dr. Tanko... That is the uh, body uh, of, hold, the, of the register. Right. So hold on a bit for me. Doc, uh, Dr. Osaka Pong, so I mean, clearly, based on the Afrobarometer survey, um, also we have Global Info Analytics survey, a number of them don't, don't favor the Electoral Commission when it comes to the trust, the optics going into this election some 30 days away from today. What mm. would you have recommended based on what we just heard from the AC chair in response to the demand of the NDC, as in the posturing in, in reference. So I read um, the statement in which the EC, um, you know, says that uh, we did acknowledge the request. Um, and I think the statement says they did um, that breakdown by, I think they gave the statistics at the regional level, but however, because of, you know, what it would take to generate all of the additional uh, uh, statistics, it becomes challenging, that's my reading of it, uh, to, uh, to do that. I, um, I mean, I know, so from what I know about the voters register, right, I know that um, during the registration process, you tend to see these infographics, at least from the 2021 and then mm -hmm. the most recent limited one, you'd see these numbers that are shared in infographics, yes. how many has registered. Total male, to female, proxy voters, all early of, voting. All of those yeah. things. Uh -huh. So for me, then, the, you know, the, the, I'm just wondering if there is a compromise. Uh, and by compromise, I mean, is there some middle ground between uh, the, the NDC and the EC, um, where some common ground can be found to figure out what can be done given the time. If I understand um, Dr. Rashid clearly, the placing that burden on the, uh, on the political party is a bit much because it takes a lot of time to be able to generate those. And so the expectation was that the EC right. would generate it and then send it to that. Uh, um, to the political parties and the independent candidates. But again, um, as you and I have said quite a number of times on, on this platform, um, there's, there are still those lingering 
um, you know, trust deficits between these two, um, uh, between these two, meaning the NDC, you know, and the EC, um, which um, at this point, I'm not sure how you overcome all of those, all of those things. But are there other elements that can be done within the time constraints right. that the NDC would find acceptable, or is it all or nothing? And right. you know, how do you resolve you know those those kinds of differences? I mean, at this point, I'm not sure how the EC and the NDC resolves you know the differences that keeps emerging. Uh, between them. And we'll see how the coming days will look like. I thank you so much, Dr. Uh, that's John Osai Kwapong. He's a senior democracy and development fellow at the Center for Democratic Development, CDD. Also to you, Dr. Asitanko, Deputy Director of IT and Elections for the NDC. We're